Welcome everyone. Um, today we have a new episode of Poetry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm your host Pratima Adhikari from Mississippi State University. Uh, welcome again. We have a new guest today, Dr. Marie Hare um, from University of Laval. Uh, Marie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm sure you have watched, or maybe some of you, or most of you have watched um, Dr. Murray's uh, previous episode in our longer version of Poetry Podcast. Here today we have her again, just to go for major, major research highlights. Um, so we will go and then listen what her lab and what she's doing. Um, I have watched your longer version, Murray, and can you, I mean, I was very interested to learn a little bit like a, a very brief about um, calcium and phosphorus modeling in broilers that you all been doing. Can you speak about it? Yeah. So um, I'm trying to predict the, the requirement with the factorial approach. So especially working on the requirement for production. So meaning the requirement for bone deposition, for bone calcium and phosphorus in bone, calcium and phosphorus in a protein tissue and in lipids. So classic modeling of growth, uh, we predict the protein deposition, the lipid deposition, and the ash deposition. And the sum of these one plus water, it's the body weight of the animal. So we have a lot of data, so we are able to predict this uh, quite uh, precisely for different breeds. Uh, in broilers, for the moment, it's we have uh, not that much genetic and uh, not that much variation. So we predict the optimized growth. And uh, we have calculated by different approach. So of um, dissected the animal to have the concentration of phosphorus in muscle, especially uh, in lipid, where there is really few calcium and phosphorus. So muscle contain a lot of phosphorus and bone contain almost all calcium. So we predict the growth of this tissue and we predict the phosphorus that goes in each. And the sum of these are the, the amount of phosphorus we have, the bird have to absorb to satisfy the, the growth. So it's the approach uh, we are developing. And with that, we predict the requirement in digestible uh, phosphorus and calcium. Yes, that's great. Um, one thing I want to talk about, I want to ask you, is really about the digestible calcium portion of it. I know there are a lot of researches about digestible phosphorus, and maybe it's easy is easier to estimate, right? I mean, we have a lot of research. Can you, how can you just kind of see those coming in the, how are we going more into that digestible calcium in the near future? Or have you already done that? Can you? Uh, uh, yeah, it's a good point. There is a lot of research ongoing and I think we still need more to uh, better predict. So the digestible calcium is driven by the feedstuff but is also driven by the bird because the bird will adapt to the diet. So a low calcium makes the bird more efficient to absorb, so to digest. So this is really a tricky part, I think, in that uh, estimation. Uh, we have to estimate in the right condition and knowing that this will be applied in different condition in the field. Uh, because here in America, we use we still use high level of calcium in comparison to to Europe, and it's the same for phosphorus. So um, these value would change uh, depending on the the level in the diet. So this is something um, complicated. I think it will not be the same than for digestible uh, lysine, where we can sum the different feed stuff. The bird will not adapt a lot. It's different for calcium and phosphorus and really especially for calcium. So we are working on better understanding and predicting these effects. Mm -hmm. So the, the modeling part we are doing on the, what I just explained is quite easy, is driven by the bird genetic potential. But the aspect of digestion, we, we are trying to predict empirically. So taking into account phosphorus and calcium ratio interaction and there is also the phytase that interact 
uh, a lot with that. So this aspect of phytase and calcium digestibility is also something we have to better understand and better predict. So this, I think we will go to such system, but it will take again some some years to be um, to be ready. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so in my lab, I was also trying to do some work, not necessarily calcium digestibility, not yet, but we're looking into different types of limestone and their solubility and how they do. And I work with laying hands mostly. So I was kind of looking and it's even more complicated and these are different birds. Um, so again, in the long cycle, uh, from, you know, a framework that they build up on during pullets and then going to the egg and there's different things coming up, the eggs and bone regulation. It's, it's very complicated. We're trying to understand that. I, I, I really appreciate sharing that vision on that. Uh, they are not really complicated, but uh, what is complicated, it's to be able, for example, to predict, uh, for example, if you just know the feed conversion ratio of your bird, I have to predict all the growth with disinformation. So we have some software that try to predict the growth based on different type of information we can have from the field. So um, That's good. That's awesome. So, okay. So I have another question about, I was always curious about this thing, calcium and phosphorus ratio. How important is it? Is there a range that you look for? Um, I know it, I guess, depends on the breed type, but really, is it, is it really an important thing or what are the factors that we need to think of um, before balancing this calcium and phosphorus yeah. ratio? Um, I think the, the ratio alone cannot really work because we, we have to take into account the, the phosphorus level. So if we are in low phosphorus, the ratio should be different than in uh, high phosphorus. It's not just a question of ratio. And it really relies on the fact that calcium and phosphorus interact with the, the phosphate and the phytate. So there is this uh, negative effect, but we still keep in mind that they will be deposited in a fixed ratio in the bone. So it's two different uh, things that we have to, to integrate. So I think recommendation will consider a ratio or a range of calcium for a specific phosphorus requirement. Because this, um, to my understanding, this uh, range is really important for uh, least cost formulation. So it's important to be able to say that between uh, 8 and 10 of calcium, it's okay. You can go that range and let the software optimize the, the, the least cost formulation. So I think it will be more a range of calcium with a level of phosphorus. But for some purpose and environment is not always interesting to reduce the phosphorus. In some contexts, we need phosphorus for soil. So uh, this, uh, this ratio is really important, but there is no unique ratio. It depends on the phosphorus level. Thank you. Thank you. Because I was trying to understand this point, what you just said, because I have heard various answers from different researchers. And I think most of them kind of also went to do what you just said about really we're not looking for that ratio. We're balancing it because we need to have that minimum thing in the bird. And then before we can go and uh, look the ratio, but that, that's, that's good. I mean, uh, so, um, the thing about, um, okay, now we are talking more into, so you're in University of Laval right now and you do a lot of research, um, also in Canada and Quebec area. <music> Elevate bird well-being and improve profitability with Cargill's tailored nutrient solutions that deliver performance. Cargill is leading through applied nutrition, leveraging deep nutrient insights and understanding of the animal's nutrient requirements to achieve your production and performance goals. I okay, I know it's kind of like almost uh, the end of the uh, end of the show. Can I ask you? You may get some free time. What you what you like to do? When you are not doing research, uh, I like doing jogging. I do a lot. Nice. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, at the end, do you want to tell about a little bit about yourself? I know it has to be at the beginning, but I thought about just doing a little different. Um, so I'm I'm French Canadian. Um, 
coming from this area in Quebec City, but uh, I live long time in in France, um, so I'm quite avoided to research. So I do mostly research. I have a research chair, so I don't do a lot of teaching. I have a lot of PhD, and uh, and I have also four kids um, that occupy my uh, their uh, time. So. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Keeps you busy full yeah. time every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really appreciate your time, uh, Dr. Marie Per. Um, I hope to see you around uh, in different meetings and meet. I'm very excited to meet you in person, which we have not ever. So I really appreciate your time and thank you for all your information that you have shared today. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you all for uh, listening to this episode. Bye now. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.